Kevin Frack, hosting here from the HSBC Canada Women's Rugby 7 Series at West Hill Stadium here in Langford. We're going to get you up to date on the weekend long event as well as the Canadian team. But first, let's preview what's on today's show. One of the most complete attack players in the, in the world. We meet Canada's own Pocket Rocket. We find out what happens when sport meets the battlefield. It, it really is you against somebody else. Back up, realign, New Booney, where are you? We introduce you to the godfather of rugby and the hurricane turns Scottish. Those stories coming up in just a bit, but right now I'm with Canada 7 CEO Bill Cooper. He's the man in charge of the event here in Langford. Talk to me about the impact uh, an event like this can have on Rugby Canada in general. Well, it's a huge impact. I mean, like you here today, the cameras and lights are on a sport that often doesn't get the attention. Uh, so events like this are a catalyst to media attention, which spurs consumer attention, which spurs participation and, and all the things the sport wants and needs. And can you take me back to uh, when this event started? Rugby Sevens has been growing so much in the last few years. Take me back, give me the 4 on one and how we got here today with Canada hosting the Seven Series here in Langford at West Hill Stadium. Well, I mean, what we're seeing here today in some ways is the, kind of the cherry on the cake. I mean, there's been a lot of hard work that's been put into this by Rugby Canada and frankly the sport, like the community of rugby across Canada that has been building this sport up. And um, Sevens is not a new genre. I mean, Sevens has been around for a long time. You look at something like the Hong Kong Sevens, it was 40 years old last year, it's 41 this year. So it's not a new genre, but what I think is you're seeing the popularization globally, and it's certain markets even more so than others. And Vancouver and Victoria have proven recently that they love the, the format, they love the pace, they love the atmosphere, and so it's exploding very recently in Canada. Talk about exploding, we had the uh, Canada Men's uh, 7 Series in, what was it, a few months ago? Was it in February? Was it was it? in March. It yeah. was in March, excuse yeah. me. Uh, huge success, tons of people. Uh, and then we have the Women's Series, very popular here as well. Can you just talk to me a little bit about the growth that you've seen, uh, not only in the West Coast and BC, but just in Canada in general of this sport? Well, on a participation basis, you're seeing a re very recent crescendo. And I think, it, you know, rugby in general in Canada is experiencing a crescendo. I was a kid growing up in British Columbia and I didn't play because uh, of the, 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 the sort of place I grew up in, there was no rugby. But that place where I grew up in now, there's tons of rugby. So it's growing, there's a crescendo. But sevens in particular, the participation levels are through the roof, double digit sort of percentage growth for several years running, and particularly in women's. Uh, women's is on a stronger growth streak than men's. So, and I think a lot of that is, is you know, when you get the success of a format like the Sevens Tournament, it attracts the attention of youth, it attracts the attention of consumers, and that, it sort of snowballs, right? And then that grows the participation base. It seems to be a viewer-friendly sport. What is it about the appeal of this sport that really brings out the excitement in the crowd and makes it so watchable? Well, you're bang on. I mean, I'm not a rugby guy. I'm a sport and event management guy. But when I saw the format, I knew immediately what magic it could be in Vancouver and Victoria. It suits our personality, right? It's it's more it's as much like a festival as it is a sporting event. The games were only 14 minutes long. Uh, the day's going all day long. People are up and down. They they watch a couple matches. They stand up, go and have a beer with some friends, have a meal, come back. It's very festival-like, and that's so suitable to the West Coast. I mean, Vancouver and Victoria love that kind of event. And then the sport itself. What can you say? 14 minutes long, action-packed, they're scoring a try on average every 90 seconds. It's non-stop, it's like watching a highlight reel. Well, it's an exciting sport, and for an exciting sport, you need exciting players, and very few players in the world are as exciting as Gislan Landry. She's the focus of our first story, and her nickname, the Pocket Rocket. It's her nickname for a reason, check it out. In the open field. And that is the class, the quality of Gislaine Landry. Her instincts take over. That's when I perform my best, and that's kind of when the really good moves come out. One of the most complete attack players in the, in the world. For the Canadian Rugby 7 squad, it's Gislaine Landry's job to score. She does it often, and with style. Excitement would be a good descriptor for, for Gislan. It's one of those players you just got to keep your eye on. Nicknamed the Pocket Rocket, for Landry, dodging defenders is nothing new. I remember playing octopus in the gym and like 
some of the guys were a bit better than me, but in terms of being one of the, I was definitely one of the last girls. Yeah. Her PE days may be in the past, but making people miss has become second nature. In 2015, the Toronto native led the World Rugby 7 Series in scoring. I want to be a difference maker. I mean, when I step on the field, I want to be a threat to any defender that's in front of me. I'm a smaller player, so the way I do that is evasiveness, speed, reading the game, and making good decisions. But at the end of the day, I want to be someone that, you know, the defender looks up and says, shit. <laughs> And getting to that level takes more than natural talent. Same amount of reps, so just bring a bag in. Head coach John Tate says it's Landry's preparation that sets her apart. One of the top players in, in terms of spending time on video, not just reviewing herself, but opposition, and, and really, you know, really wants to learn, uh, learn a lot about uh, the game and really be a master of, uh, of our sport. A quiet, humble veteran who lets her game do the talking. The 27-year-old Landry's leadership has rubbed off on some of the team's rising stars, like 17-year-old Oak Bay native Caroline Crossley. Gislaine definitely leads by example and just does everything right every day, so just watching her helps you learn. And this summer, Gislaine and her teammates will be making Canadian sport history, becoming the first Canadian women's rugby sevens team to ever play in the Olympics. For rugby, it's massive. For us as individuals and as a team, it's it's an honor to be part of the program. This group is a, a group of trailblazers in the sport. Since the city of Langford became home to the national program in 2012, the women's game has steadily grown across Canada, with women's teams now in 20 universities and nearly 250 high schools. But showcasing Landry and her teammates on the Olympic world stage could bring the sport to new heights. To have female sporting models as a kid is huge. It gets more kids involved, so I think this is going to be a big part of that and growing the game in Canada. Team on two, one, two, team! Speaking of talented, exciting players on the pitch, I'm here with Ashley Stacy. She is a 10-year veteran with Rugby Canada. Ashley, you're not playing this weekend. Tell us why. Well, dealing with an injury right now, a uh, lower body injury, so uh, just rehab and doing everything I can to get back out on the field as fast as possible, but sad missing out on the home tournament. Um, but yeah, the girls are going to bring it and uh, do as best they can. Now, I know it's very mums the word on the injury, kind of like hockey playoffs, you don't reveal too much, but can you tell us where you are and you know when we can expect you back on the pitch? Yeah, um, just recovering from some surgery and uh, I should be back on the pitch uh, beginning of June, full return to play. Uh, so I'll have a couple of months to get ready for the Olympics and that's my main goal for this year is to be ready and back for the Olympics. That's exciting. Let's talk about the Olympics. I mean, what's, what's the attitude like right now? Uh, this is the first Olympics for Rugby Sevens history yeah. uh, just I mean you gotta be pretty pumped yeah um, I mean the atmosphere is amazing here in Langford and uh, we're really excited to have the opportunity we qualified last year for the Olympics we know we're going um, and we have five tournaments that are a build-up and preparations leading into August so we're really just trying to build our momentum um, and we've always been doing that the last couple of years as we built our momentum throughout the tournament so um, we're doing everything we can to prepare and be the best that we can come the Olympics in August. Well I know everyone here in the South Island is uh, cheering for a speedy and great recovery thank and you. the rest of Canada we can't wait to see you uh, at Rio. Thank you very much. We got to take a quick break uh, more from West Hill Stadium when we come back. Watching VI Sports on Shaw TV. Welcome back here at West Hill Stadium, the HSBC Women's 7 Series. But right now, we're going to take a step away from the pitch and head to Nanaimo, where Team Omega is the largest simulation paintball team in BC. We're going to learn from the pros what the sport, yes, I said sport, is all about. You'll never get an adrenaline experience like that. It taps into something a little bit more primordial, I think. It, it really is you against somebody else and a real, a real battle between two people. Unlike most sports, where you gain points or you can lose a few yards, here if you get shot, it's game over for you. 
So it really forces you to think differently and approach the game differently from that stay alive but still win aspect, which is very exciting. It, it really gets the heart pounding. It's so much more than just shooting. It seems like it is just shooting because you use the guns, but really I, I like to think of it more as it's paint tag. When people get tagged, it may hurt depending on where they get hit. But Joe says it's something people get used to. That's the biggest fear is that people worry that it's going to hurt. And the first time you get shot, it does. It'll make you jump and it'll definitely make, catch you off guard, but you quickly become used to it. You wear, you wear protection. You know, I have a paintball mask, covers everything on my face, it covers my ears and then I have a neck protector for throat shots, and then I have, uh, I have uh, what's called a bounce vest, so it's a padded armor that you wear underneath, and that just keeps, keeps the pain factor down a bit, especially if you're gonna be in close quarters where you're expecting to get shot a lot. Um, but even this, I mean, I'm wearing so much between the buckles and the belts and all that stuff, I mean, you're not gonna feel a paintball, right? Joe Simpson is captain of the largest scenario paintball team in BC, Team Omega. The team is made up of members who are ranked champions to beginners just starting out. Omega is more of a brotherhood. Everybody helps each other out. Whoever comes out, you're missing a mask, a gun, this and that. Everybody helps each other out and uh, we help out all the renters and all the new players too. And uh, we're, we're known as very good for sportsmanship and honesty. Some of the team gathered today at Raptor Warrior Games at Whipple Tree Junction in Duncan to play Capture the VIP. Joe says these scenario games are great for beginner players as it involves more tactical thinking than simply gunning down as many players as possible. I'll be playing the VIP and you have to get me to an extraction point safely without me getting killed and uh, to, to win points and it's going to go back and forth like that all day, basically a human piñata. Our field is more of a, um, a city fight field. It's almost like a video game, almost this field. So, so when, when you're going out, it's like every corner of the field could have an enemy there. So we're using uh, detonators and bombs and RPGs, fake ones. Throw it, this cap pops off, and then it sprays paint everywhere. Joe says the props, military style clothing, and realistic guns simply add to the fantasy of playing a video game. They put you into that frame of mind um, that this, what you're doing is real and what you're doing is um, is really for a survival, right? You're trying to survive against other people and test yourself and your wits and your, your physical abilities against another person. The rest of your life, you, you don't really get that chance to be like a Rambo or a Katniss Everdeen and, and you can come out here and, and you could be that person. Joe says if you love the fantasy and playing video games but want to get some exercise, paintball is a great sport for you. Team Omega is always looking for new members to play with. For VI Sports in Nanaimo, I'm Rayanne the Plant. Thanks, Rayanne. Those guys are hardcore. And speaking of hardcore, I'm with one of the toughest women on the planet, Victoria's own mixed martial artist, Sarah Cuff. And Sarah, I know you got a bit of a connection with the uh, Rugby Canada team. Tell me a little bit about it. Yeah, you know, I've been working alongside the Rugby Canada team, uh, both the men's and the women's, for probably six or seven, maybe even longer years. Uh, and I've started to actually work with the athletes and uh, on their off season they sometimes come in and do some wrestling technique and some fun conditioning and uh, their coach John Tate and strength and conditioning coach Tyler Goodale um, you know bring them in and they do a great job working with them and then just ask me to help out a little bit um, with something on the side. Toughen them up? Absolutely although they're probably tougher than I am they uh, this rugby sport is pretty incredible and it's pretty uh, pretty insane when you watch it and if you see how hard they work, their work ethic, uh, the team as a whole, they're incredible athletes and they put them, their bodies through a lot of punishment. Tougher than you, I don't know, you're pretty humble there, but uh, let's talk about you and getting back in the octagon. We want to know, uh, your fans out there want to know, when are we going to see you back? You know, I'm hoping sooner rather than later for sure. I had a, a shoulder injury that I've been rehabbing and hopefully it's only another week or two before I'm back to full training and then I'm able to book a fight, whether it's with the UFC, whether it's with someone else. Uh, at this point, uh, I'm going to take whatever I can get the soonest, the fastest, and get me back in the cage right away. And, and really my biggest goal is fighting to my potential, which I haven't done over the last probably two or three years, I think. Um, so really just working with my team, working with my coaches, and just pumping it out and just getting out there and doing what these girls do when they show up on the world stage. I want to do that same thing. So can I just ask, in the last two or three years, you said you're not fighting to your potential. What are some things that you've maybe learned if you've reflected on, and, and what are some things you're working on? You know, I think part of it is just being really comfortable in the cage, and you would think that would be a really good thing, but sometimes for me, I'm very analytical, and, and I'm not fighting as hard 
as when I'm scared or when I think like, oh my gosh, they're going to beat the crap out of me. Uh, so I, I think I need to have more of that and more of kind of the craziness. Bring that back in. Less calm, less collected. Just go in there and be wild and put on a show and have fun doing it. And I remember in our story we did together about a year ago, uh, you were teaching the little kids, very cute little kids, mixed martial arts, introducing them to the sport. Are you still doing that? Absolutely. The little bulldogs program that I run at Zuma, they're so cute. Uh, and they're really picking it up. They're doing a great job of improving and picking up the skill set that goes along with being a part of martial arts, but having a lot of fun uh, in a safe environment. Well, it all starts at the grassroots level. And that, that's actually our focus for our next story. We're going to go uh, to a story on a grass Roots rugby program that's been around here in Victoria for over 40 years. Are you ready? For Mick Eckhart, go! the pitch, and then we're gonna pass out, is his time machine. Definitely I get younger when I get out of here on the field. He's like, run, run, run! Run, Jordan! Wheels! At a boy! Sort of the godfather of, of mini rugby. It started over four decades ago. 1972, first year I started teaching. The same year a different godfather graced the silver screen, Mick Eckhart launched Victoria Mini Rugby. Giving back is, is what I'm, I'm trying to do here. Giving back to a sport that saw Mick rise the ranks to high-end national and international levels. And still today, nearing 70 years old, for six weeks a year, three days a week, Mick and his crew volunteer their time, laying the foundation for Victoria Rugby's next generation. It's just like grabbing people and like putting them on the ground. He's a really nice guy. He he pushes us, which is a good thing. Back up, realign, new Booney, where are you? Because I like getting pushed to do better stuff, so I can be a better rugby player. Well, he's very tough, um, but he's nice. Good girl, good listening. Mick teaches the basics, but with a strong underlying message. Confidence and uh, dealing with people and camaraderie. He coached me back in high school when I was playing with James Bay as a 16, 17 year old. So I got to know his style then. And yeah, the message is different for the kids, but the energy is the same. Go. And that same energy has helped guide some of Victoria's top rugby talent, including retired professional rugby player, Gareth Reese and current women's national team player Caroline Crossley. There's been some uh, very, very strong players that come out of the program. A program that's seen rugby emerge as the sport of choice for many young girls. Uh, it is the only co-educational activity uh, in elementary school. First started, there were no girls that played. Rugby is what is my favorite sport. I just joined tackle this year, so I love getting the feeling of tackle and making a try it just and passing it's nice to when you make someone else feel good when they get the ball and go for a run run at a girl after four or five practices they're able to step on the field and 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 play the game and at the end of the free program mick hosts an annual tournament for young rugby players across the province a celebration of the sport and its bright future oh it's it's definitely rewarding. Thanks to people like Mick. Nice catch, Harry! One, two, three! Get those balls! Get those balls! Such a great program. Mick, you're doing great work. Madison? More VI Sports after the break. <laughs> Watching VI Sports on Shaw TV. Welcome back to West Hills Stadium. Now, the historic Victoria Highland Games is right around the corner. It features plenty of Scottish sporting traditions, and we sent our own volunteer reporter, yes, he's back, Ken Hurricane Himes, to check it out. Hello, sports fans. I'm Ken Hurricane Himes, a sports guy that's not shy. Welcome to the Craig Flower Manor, and welcome to the Vancouver Island Scottish Stores Association. Now let's go talk to Ray Shohanovich. Hello. Did I get that right, Ray? Close. 
It's a, it's a good it. Scottish name, isn't it? It is, yeah. Ray, tell us all about uh, the sport. Maybe start at the history of the actual sport. Well, the history goes back more than a thousand years into Scotland. Um, back then, most of the implements are sort of things you would find around the farm or around the blacksmith shop, um, weights for scales, things like that. And then it was guys just getting together and seeing who could throw the furthest. And then it was picked up by the King of Scotland, decided to be a great way to test his warriors and to prick the premier ones for his premier guard. And today's modern athlete, how did that all come about? Uh, well, basically the condition is, or the cultural has been going on for the full thousand years. Uh, most of the modern day guys are guys that have done track and field in school or football in school. Um, and of course, after school, there's not as many chances to keep that competitive drive going. And so we naturally fall into something like this, which is a lot of fun. And there's a direct correlation between the Olympics and this sport? Uh, yeah, both the shot put and the hammer throw were both uh, brought from the Highland Games and introduced into the Olympic sports. So can we go look at the uh, our weapons of choice, our tools for this sport? Sure. Let's go. I'm loose now, man. Okay, I'm not overdressed. All right, we're with Lucy. <laughs> That's my cat's name. <laughs> Hello, I'm with Susie Lajoie now, and we're going to talk to the former 2012 Canadian champion of this sport. But first, do you approve of what I'm wearing? Do I look Scottish? Because I'm feeling really Scottish right now. I would put a shirt on. You're what, 5'7", five, 5'8"? Five, no, I'm 5'10". 5'10", <laughs> OK. <laughs> well, oh, yes, yes, indeed. So, are you going to show me a little bit about the sport today and take me over there and uh, I would love to. Put, put me through the uh, paces? Because yes. I would love that and so would our VI Sports fans. I will teach you the lightweight for distance. So behind your back, you're going to spin it around, okay? Spin it around and a step right across the trig. And two more steps, okay? So it'll look like this. You're just gonna do a one spin instead of the two that I did. Right. You're gonna start here. I'll make you foot marks. One foot there, one foot here. And you're going to go boom, boom. And then release. Boom. Is it still going? It's still going. <laughs> we take our last one again, take our freedom! Woo! <laughs> Come on, Daddy, let's go toss the cabers. Come on, boys, let's go toss the ca cabers. It's like balancing a pencil. Okay. It's just slightly bigger than a pencil. Okay. So bend over just some. Bend over, let it come close to your body, so straight up. Start running. Run, 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 pull, pull, pull. Hey, how'd I do out there, little girl? You should practice more. The Scottish have an expression. Failing badly is good. What does that mean? That means that when you get out there and you try and you fail, even if it's bad, that's good because you're doing something instead of doing nothing. For VI Sports, I'm Ken Hurricane Himes. See you next time. You're watching VI Sports. The 153rd Highland Games takes place at Topaz Park, May 21st to May 23rd. For more info, check out victoriahighlandgames.com. Well, we're all wrapped up here at West Hills Stadium. Thank you so much for tuning in. Remember to follow us on Twitter for sports news in your community and for links to full episodes of VI Sports Online. For everyone here at VI Sports, thank you so much for tuning in. And stay tuned for highlights of the 2016 HSBC Canada Women's 7 Series. We'll see ya. Thank <laughs> you.